Hi, my name is Judy Cooper and I'm a candy maker. I learned from my mother many, many years ago and I still make a lot of the candies that she and I made together. Some of those get pretty complicated, but I have found or kind of invented a few that are much simpler and still very tasty and can be made in any ordinary kitchen with a microwave. So the first of these is peppermint bark, which has always been one of my favorites at the holidays. So I figured out if they can do it, I can do it, and so can you. So let's go to my kitchen and make the peppermint bark. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna make, first of all, peppermint bark, which is usually available at stores during Christmas time, but it's good anytime. There's no reason why you can't make it anytime you want to. You don't really have to have certain amounts, but you do have to have proportions. I have dark chocolate, two cups of that, which these are melting wafers, which I much prefer to chips or the bars that you melt because they're easier to work with and easier to melt. I also have two cups of white melting wafers so that there's an equal amount of each. You can make one cup of each, four cups of each, however much you wanted to do. And these are also um, easily melted. Then to go with this, you've got the topping of the peppermint, and I have a half cup of peppermint chips here. Uh, so that means about a fourth of what, or yes, about a fourth of what we've got of the chocolate. These are already made. I get them at specialty stores, uh, stores that have gourmet sections to them. Much easier than making your own. They're the perfect size so people don't break their teeth on the peppermint bark and they work very well. But if you cannot find these, you can make your own by taking candy canes, sealing them up in a plastic Ziploc, <clears throat> and then taking a hammer to them and just beating them to death, take out all of your aggressions and uh, end up with little peppermint chips. You want them to be small enough, again, that people don't break their teeth, uh, but you also don't want them to be dust. And I've found that using a, work, um, a food processor kind of makes reduces it to dust. So that's your choice. But anyway, the first thing that we need to do is have the tray ready for making it. And I have a piece of parchment paper just on an ordinary tray, nothing special. And that's where I will start pouring the chocolate to make the peppermint bark. So I'm going to take, first of all, I like the bottom layer to be dark chocolate. And this will be melted. Now two things about chocolate, it's very finicky. You have to be very careful with it. It's not, um, not hard to work with, but you have to keep these things in mind. First of all, that your bowl, spoon, any utensils are absolutely dry. Water affects chocolate very poorly. It will make it seize up and get really ugly, and you don't want that to happen. So keep your chocolate dry. The other thing is when you melt it, you have to be very careful. Now I do use a microwave. I don't fool with a double boiler anymore like my mother did, but I do it no higher than 30% power and I check it frequently. Like I might let it go a minute and a half or two minutes to begin with, and then I check it about every 30 seconds. You don't want this to be completely soup. That's overheating it. You want it to just look melted, um, shiny, and then you stir to finally incorporate all the chocolate together into a smooth mess, <laughs> a smooth, smooth mess of chocolate goodness. So the next thing I'm going to do is melt this chocolate and I will show you what I'm talking about. Okay, you can see that the chocolate is perfect at this point. It's still in wafers, but it's melty and I just need to stir to get that completely melted. Otherwise, you're risking burning. 
and burning is not fun. It smells terrible and you can't use the chocolate. It just has to go in the trash. So I'm stirring this until it gets good and smooth. And it looks like it pretty much is now. And then I'm going to pour it onto this tray and make a chocolate puddle. Scraping up from the bowl. Okay, and you can see about how much two cups makes. You want to spread it a little bit, but since other things are going to go on top of it, it'll push it out larger. So don't get it too thin. Okay, and the next step after that is we have to let that set for a while and we have to let it cool off and be ready to have the white chocolate put on top. So we'll get back to that after I have melted the white chocolate. Okay, so at this point I have chilled or let set whichever way you want to do it, the chocolate to where it's no longer gooey. And I have melted the white chocolate. Same thing, notice how it's still in the wafers, but as I stir it, it gets smooth. One little note, white chocolate burns a lot quicker than dark, so be careful with it. It turns the strangest orange color <laughs> when you burn it, and yes, I have. <laughs> I have done it. So we're going to top the puddle here with the white chocolate. As soon as I get it smooth, which it is now. So I'm pouring it over this. And smoothing it to the edges. Try not to dip too hard with your spoon because the dark chocolate underneath it will melt a little bit with the starker, with the uh, hotter white chocolate on top of it. Okay, so you've got this nice puddle. Then you take the peppermint pieces and you sprinkle them trying to get all the way to the edge. You will waste a few, that's okay. Put them in the tin you're storing it in and it'll make it all just taste that much more pepperminty. Get an even cover. You can use as much or as little as you want. The commercial ones, some of them have very little peppermint on top, some of them are just stacked with it. This is about what I do. And you want to get that to adhere to the white chocolate on top. So I take a piece of saran, uh, saran wrap, plastic wrap, and very lightly, very lightly tap it to press those pieces in. Yes, it mushes up a little bit. And then, once again, it's time to let it sit or refrigerate it until it is all solid. Then you break it up into pieces. And so the next thing I'm doing is making sure it, it gets solid. This has set up now. It's all nice and firm. So you peel it away from the parchment paper and then you break up the peppermint bark into pieces, as large or as small as you want. The peppermint kind of flies, which actually, if some goes on the floor, my dog loves it, but you know. 
whatever. Uh, and after you have broken it all up, gather it together and store it in an airtight tin. It does not to need to be refrigerated, nor really should it be. Um, just break it in pieces and store it in an airtight tin. And it keeps probably two to three weeks if you can keep it around that long. It's great at Christmas, but kind of start the season early. A little bowl of this or plate of this at Thanksgiving to pass around after the pumpkin pie might be kind of fun too, kind of like an after dinner mint. So this is peppermint bark, very easy to do. So that's how you do peppermint bark. Pretty simple, really. It keeps pretty well and is lovely in a box of candy for gifts and it's pretty simple to make. If you have a question, so you can contact me at jtcooperauthor.com. That's my website uh, for my writing, but also for this. I'll see you later. For more on candy making, visit claremontlibrary.org to request the books The Sweet Book of Candy Making or The Homemade Sweet Shop or the DVD Candy Making, a guide for home confectioners. These can be delivered to the branch of your choice for pickup. As always, ask a librarian for more recommendations. Check out these books by J.T. Cooper, Running, Viral, and Plus, A Fantasy, and visit jtcooperauthor.com for more information. Thank you.